إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله وأصلي وأسلم عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى تابعيهم ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون Praise be to Allah We praise him, we seek his guidance and forgiveness Whomever Allah guide, none can misguide. And whomever Allah leaves astray, none can guide besides Allah. We bear witness that there is no one worth worshipping but Allah. And we bear witness that Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger. Prayers and peace of Allah be upon him, upon his companions, upon his followers and their followers till the day of judgment. Ameen. Servants of Allah have the taqwa of Allah. That is, be aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching everything that you do, so do not do except what makes Allah happy. Have the taqwa of Allah, that is, have the balance between the love of Allah and the fear of His punishment. Have the taqwa of Allah and do not die except on the state of Islam, the state of submission to the will and the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amma ba'd. يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في أوائل سورة الحج يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارا وما هم بسكارا ولكن عذاب الله شديد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started Surah Al-Hajj talking about something that might seem is not related to Hajj. He's talking about the Day of Judgment. Allah says in the beginning of Surah Al-Hajj what could be translated as, O mankind, have the taqwa of Allah. Indeed, the shuk of the Day of Judgment is horrible. It is so scary so terrifying to the point, if a pregnant woman witnesses it, she will have a miscarriage. If a nursing mother attends it, she's going to forget about her child and run away. People will be in so much chaos, running away in different directions, as if they are intoxicated, drunk, but they are not. Indeed, the punishment is severe in that day. And for six or seven more verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps talking about the day of judgment, even though the title of the surah is Al-Hajj. And for many time, many years, I always thought, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start a surah talking about Hajj, talking about the day of judgment? Until I realized later, that is one of the purposes of going to Hajj is to remember the day of judgment. Believing in the Day of Judgment is one of the pillars of our religion. Actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in the Quran so many times. Anyone who believes in Allah and believes in the Day of Judgment and do good in their lives, there is no fear. They should fear no nothing in the Day of Judgment. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started his da'wah, his message, he did not tell people don't drink alcohol right away. He did not tell people to wear the hijab right away. He did not tell people don't undo right away. No. He strengthened their aqidah, their faith, by telling them about Allah and the Day of Judgment. Aisha radiallahu anha told us, if Prophet Muhammad when he first came, told people don't do that and don't do this, no one would listen to him. But for 13 years in Mecca, he strengthened that aqidah, that faith inside their hearts. He talked about Allah about the Day of Judgment, about hell, about Jannah, paradise. So the minute he told them, don't drink alcohol, everyone poured the, the alcohol in the streets. The minute he told the woman, put hijab on, they right away put it on in the same moment. 
And that's what we should do when we are teaching our children Islam. When we teach a new brother who entered Islam, what, what is Islam about? Instead of telling him don'ts and do's, teaching him about Allah, the day of judgment, paradise. That is the method of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his Quran, in his book. Now let's ask ourselves this question. What do we know about the day of judgment? This is a place that we are going there for sure. No one has any doubt that after we die, we're going to have to go through that stage in our journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now if you ask ourselves a question, when you want to move to a new neighborhood, you do a study about that neighborhood. When you're going to a new school, a new college, a new university, you're going to make your own study and own research about the place that you're going to. You just don't go there without knowing what's going to happen. The same thing should have been done for this important stage of our lives. The day of judgment. What do we know about it? Let us go through an imaginary journey today. To the future. To the certain future. And try to learn a little bit about some of the things that happens during the day of judgment. And we're going to make a small comparison between the two teams in the day of judgment. The first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ سَبَقَتْ لَهُمْ مِنَّ الْحُسْنَى أُولَئِكَ عَنْهَا مُبْعَدُونَ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ حَسِيسَهَا وَهُمْ فِي مَشْتَهَتْ أَنفُسُهُمْ خَالِدُونَ لَا يَحْزُنُهُمُ الْفَزَعُ الْأَكْبَرُ وَتَتَلَقَّاهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ هَذَا يَوْمُكُمُ الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ تُوعَدُون the people who did righteous deeds in their lives, and there is no fear on them in the day of judgment. The angels will welcome them and tell them, this is what you've been promised. And the other team, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَوْمَ نَحْشُرُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ يَوْمَئِذٍ جِثِيَّ وَالشَّيَاطِينَ جِثِيَّ حَوْلَ جَهَنَّمَ جِثِيَّ They will be gathered, the evildoers, and the devils right around hellfire on their knees, a sign of humiliation. And let us choose at the end of this khutbah which team we would like to be among. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, that the day of judgment is as long as 50,000 years. في يوم كان مقداره خمسين ألف سنة Try to imagine yourself waiting for 50,000 years just to find out. Did you pass or did you fail? We don't like to wait as human beings. We don't like to wait. Remember that day in college when the teacher said that the, the, the results of the finals are going to be delayed two, or two weeks? You get worried and you get anxious. Imagine yourself going to the doctor and the doctor says, you know what, there is a lesion on your skin. We're going to send it to the lab and we need two more weeks to find out if it's cancer or not. This would be the longest two weeks of your life. When we are standing up on the, on the, on the uh, grocery store lines, we complain to the manager if we wait five or ten more minutes. And it's air-conditioned sealed. And by the way, when we're waiting on these lines, please brothers, those magazines on both sides, lower your gaze. You are putting poison in your mind when you're staring at those things. So we don't like to wait. Imagine waiting 50,000 years just to find out. On the other hand, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَتَمُرُّ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِ كَرَكْعَتَيْنِ اثْنَتَيْنِ It will be as short as two rak'ahs for the believers. Just like the two rak'ah that we're going to pray right now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that you left your work to come and pray today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that you talk to your customers, to your supervisor, your teacher, your boss, to come and pray these turakas. وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ نَسِيَّ Allah will never forget that. And insha'Allah, He'll make the day of judgment as short as turakas for you, not as long as 50,000 years. Say ameen. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, everyone is going to be resurrected without clothes, naked. Aisha said, men and women in the same place without clothes, aren't they going to start staring at each other? He said, yes, but the situation is so hard that no one will care. Everyone is worried about his own self. Every single one is going to run even from their own brothers, their own families. Just caring about nafsi, nafsi, myself, myself. And then the, the righteous people will be covered one at a time. The first one to be covered is Prophet Ibrahim salam. But one of the things that you can do in this life to be covered in the day of judgment, not only physically, but also your, your secrets, because everything's going to be exposed in the day of judgment, is to cover others. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you cover the shortcomings of your brother or your sister, Allah will cover your shortcomings in the day of judgment. You see me giving a khutbah right now, 
and you see me outside on the street doing something wrong. Instead of going out and say, oh, I saw him doing that and doing that. No, no, cover it. And Allah will cover your shortcomings in the day of judgment. In another hadith, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يُحشر الناس يوم القيامة ركبانا ومشاة وعلى وجوههم The people in the day of judgment is going to be gathered and move from one place to another place on three methods, on three means. Either they're going to be riding, and we don't know what kind of rides. Could it be a car, a, a, a plane, a horse, maybe they thought the companions. Could be a, a ride that's never been invented. And others will be walking, and others will be dragged while their face is on the floor. Imagine yourself, how proud would you be when you are on your right? And how comfortable you are when people are walking. And how proud you are when you're looking at people, their faces on the floor. And you have the full right. You know those who laughed at you in this life? They told you, oh, you're crazy, you're wearing hijab. Oh, you're crazy, you don't drink. Oh, you're crazy, you don't do drugs. Oh, you're doing that. You have the full right to laugh at them. They told you, man, you're not drinking alcohol, you're missing a lot. Now it's your turn to tell them, man, you're missing a lot. I'm on my right and your face is on the floor. In another situation, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that people in the day of judgment will suffer from darkness. To the point some people will put their hands in front of their eyes, they cannot see it. And we don't like darkness. It's psychologically devastating. Especially if it's for a long time. On the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the glad tidings. يَوْمَ تَرَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَسْعَى نُورُهُمْ بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَبِأَيْمَانِهِمْ When you see the believer men and women enjoying their lives, wherever they turn their face, there is light. Wherever they turn their face, there is light. One of the things that you can do in this life to charge that battery so you can have a full light in the day of judgment is a very simple thing you can do, especially brothers. Come to the masjid when it's dark outside. بشر المشائين في الظلم إلى المساجد بالنور التام يوم القيامة. Give the good news for those who go to the masjid when it's dark. Fajr, tomorrow there is a breakfast, good. But not only breakfast, you're getting more light in the day of judgment as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. In the day of judgment, people will be so thirsty. Because it's like a desert, no shade, no water except from the hands of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine yourself going to the beloved and he's giving you a sip of water from his own fountain. A sip that you will never feel thirsty afterwards. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who drink from the blessed hands of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the day of judgment. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfirun. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أفضل المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى تابعيهم ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. We are talking about some of the things that's going to happen in the day of judgment, and we're making a comparison between the two teams, the winners and the losers of the day of judgment. I'll finish with one comparison. As Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that the sun will get so close to earth in the day of judgment, to the point